Our next speaker, fellow that I've, I've known for a few years now, the author of several books, including How to Become CEO, is uh, Mr. Jeffrey Fox, and today he's going to speak to, uh, speak to us about the concept of dollarize or die, something he feels very strongly about. So without further ado, Mr. Jeff Fox, the floor is yours. Good morning, everybody. Um, how many folks here are uh, the head of a company, even if it's your own? How many folks are like senior managers in the company? Uh, how many people work for companies, say, one to 10 employees? How about 10 to 50? Okay, over 50, anybody? Over 50, okay. Um, how many of you are in sales to some degree? All hands should go up. All right. Um, how many are customer facing? Okay. Um, how many of you believe your products or services uh, have points of difference that have uh, somewhat unique that provide value? Okay. And um, how many of your how many of you folks price your products to value? How many of you? calculate the value and determine the price that way, not based on cost. Okay. And uh, how many of you think your products are underpriced? So if you, if you price it to value, you can't be underpriced. Well, and, and how many of you feel you are good at overcoming the price objection? Okay. Well, in today's marketplace, as you know, with the, all the, the re this recession, uh, pricing is one of the real critical components to profitability. And uh, let's see how we're going to do this. All right. So what is dollarization? It's a word I made up, but it means you translate the benefits of your products into the, the dollarized outcomes the customer gets from your product or service. So that, in fact, you are not selling a product or service. You're selling money. And when you can articulate how much money your customer is going to get, you're going to be able to uh, get your price and overcome the price objection. Now, uh, pricing is the key to profitability. It's the razor's edge lever. Um, you must price your products to value. And, and to do that, you will overcome the price objection. And you, your customer will understand their return on investment. That's the only thing in business to business, the only thing customer, you should know that business to business, 85% of the calculus to buy something is based on the value the customer gets and 15% is based on uh, if they feel good, if they like you, prior experience with you, know your brand name, that kind of thing. So I'm gonna give you some examples of this, just go right exactly how it works without uh, all the theory. In this particular case, one of our clients sells a very mature product. As a matter of fact, the product's been around since 1863. Very little, uh, uh, very little innovation. A major company, uh, a, world, uh, a World 1000 company, went to our client's customer uh, and offered them on the entire list of products, every SKU, a 10 to 50% discount per product. Um, the, the, uh, we worked with the, the, the client and discovered that one of the points of difference they had because of a long history with this customer was they did electronic transfers. Uh, electronic, in other words, the, an order would come in electronically. It would be filled electronically and billed and shipped. The competitor was going to have to come in and do this manually. And the customer knew that the, our, our client's uh, cost of transaction over time had declined to ten dollars per transaction, and the competitors would have been one hundred and fifty. Customers' words. Now, in doing this, the way you do this is this. This is the client. Let me see if I can. Oh, whatever. Where's it going? Oh, yeah. this is my first time at TEDx, so you're. Gonna, I don't even know how to work the damn thing. All right, <laughs> so. The, the, this particular customer had 969 transactions. And by the way, their transactions are extremely complex. You know, they had to ship to 14 different plants, they had like 80 different products, all kinds of different units and shipping at different times, et cetera. 
at any rate, if, the, if, they went with the, if they went with the competitor, 969 transactions times 150 bucks would have been $145,000 additional cost. And, if they, and they actually would have saved the difference between 162 and 146 was the discount. But when you add in the true cost of doing business, the savings to our, to our customer going with our, their customer going with our client was about 120,000. And, and of course, they kept the business. There was a lot of other things we could have dollarized too, like breakage and things like that. But this is an actual example that happened recently. Now, in this particular case, uh, the client is selling, our client is selling lighting like this stuff. And they're selling it to one of the most predatory buyers on the planet, Walmart. And what they identified was that by changing our client, our client asked the questions we tell them to ask was, why do you want light? And the guy wants light, you know, to illuminate the, um, the parking lot, to eliminate uh, accidents. He wants light to better merchandise. In this particular case, by changing the light bulbs, a type of light bulb, they were able to reduce the ambient temperature in the uh, warehouses and saved on air conditioning costs. So they could save the, cu they could save the customer $1.5 million. The way Walmart translates $1.5 million is into the equivalent revenues. So they would have, they would have had to do at their 1.5% net operating profit $100 million in sales to get this kind of savings. So our client won uh, a two-year contract and a honeymoon type of thing, on and on and on, just by selling the dollarized value of reducing the heat in a warehouse. Now, a lot of you guys, how many people here in their literature, someplace or other, claim they add value? We add value. Value added. Okay. You're one of the 35 million companies in the United States that makes the same claim. It is an empty cliche. Adding value is, means nothing. It's it got to be a number. And if a customer can't count it, it can't be counted. So every time you hear someone say value added, the customer knows nothing. So what customers don't buy are products and services. They don't buy patents. They don't buy technology. They don't buy features and benefits. What they buy is the outcome they get from investing in your services. They don't buy, as it says here, we don't buy drills. You buy perfectly round, low cost, low production holes, 50 of them drilled per minute. So customers buy what the dollarized value you present. And what they want is a return greater than this. So if they invest $100,000 in you, they want the $100,000 back and, an, and a positive ROI on that $100,000. And you are the person that has to educate the customer to what that value is. If, if you don't emphasize value, the only thing the customer knows is price. Now, I, I'm sure in your literature and your sales approach, some of you say like your products are better quality, superior, faster, lighter. Anybody say stuff like that? What does the customer know when you say your products are more reliable or that they last longer or something? Nothing. The customer knows nothing. At least give them some facts with which they can, they can judge the facts and decide for themselves. Especially today, the customers are very smart. And if you have, in your job, your only competition in many cases really is customer ignorance. They don't know what you can do for them. So your job by asking questions, very simple questions on a sales call or in any kind of presentation helps educate the customer to what you can do. So these are the only two reasons people buy, to feel good or to solve a problem. You can buy a yellow jacket like this to feel good. Solving a problem, maybe it's warmer, keeps you warm or something. But a business to business, 85% is solving a problem of the decision. And, that, and there are only three things you can do for a customer. The only three reasons they buy. You can increase their gross margin dollars, you can reduce or eliminate their current costs, or you can help them avoid the cost of a catastrophic future event. That's it. Nothing else. This is sales, 100% of selling right here. This is why people buy, and, and, uh, and the problem can also be like funding an opportunity. So that's another way of looking at it. But anyway, this is the so you and there's a million ways this manifests itself in selling, as you know. But these are the three things you can help a customer calculate. One, two, three. This is how you dollarize. State the benefit. We last longer, more reliable, colder, hotter, tastier. 
How does the, then you translate that? What do you mean by last longer? Theirs lasts for three years, ours lasts for four. And you can do the math on that. And what's the value of that longer life product? Let's see if I have one. Oh, here's a, just a quick, this is what you do in pre-call planning. I know all of you are in sales, always pre-call plan your sales calls in writing, correct? Before you call on a customer, I know, 100% of the time. That's what rainmakers do. 100% of the time, this particular little calculation is transactions per year times the cost per transaction is the annual transaction cost. You compare your, your uh, solution with what the competitor is doing. Now, here's a case history. This particular, uh, this particular customer, a client of ours, has a, had a motor called the Ultra. And for 12 straight years, they go to Georgia Pacific. And for 12 straight years, Georgia Pacific says to them, you know, we like your product. We, it's better quality. And 12 straight years, they buy Toshiba motor for $1,000 less. So we help them dollarize the value of their product. And I said to them, what, what's your big thing? He said, well, we last longer. We're more reliable. It's a very uh, harsh environment, you know, cutting down trees and stuff. And I said, why? I said, I don't care why, because I know you're telling the truth. He said, oh, we got a special little bearing. I said, okay, that's enough. I don't need to know that. How much longer did they last? Well, in this particular case, the customer buys four a year, all right? The $6,000 motor. I don't know how it oh, it disappears on that thing. I got it. Oh, I got it. Okay, so the last longer, the Ultra lasts twice as long in this harsh environment. Very ethical company, don't lie, tell them the truth. So, how do you dollarize it? With our guy, they need two, two motors. Okay, the competitor, because they're twice as long, would need four, right? In the, in the application, which is like one year. So when they go with us, they buy one motor for 6,000, so their, their total expense is 12,000. When they buy the Toshiba motor, they end up buying four. Every year for 12 years, that's 20,000. It's hard to see because they're out in the forest and they, years overlap, and so they really couldn't identify it. And of course, there's every time the motor goes down, it's $1,000 of labor to uh, replace it. And then you have to have two extra motors in inventory. And you can, this is how you calculate inventory. It, uh, inventory calculation is about 25% carrying cost of inventory. It includes obsolescence, cost of money, property taxes, and all that. So in this particular case, this was the true, the true value of our client's higher priced product. They'd never dollarized it before. Now they just, their opening sentence of their uh, proposal. Anybody here do RFQs, RFPs, all that kind of stuff? Don't do them. Just look at them as a lead, you know. Consider them a lead because they never got it right anyway. But in this particular case, we started out, the, 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 the RFQ said, uh, you were, for your investment in ten, twelve thousand dollars $12,000, we get this kind of return. And that for the first time in 12 years, they got the business. This is another one where the client's motor uh, had a $4,000 selling price. The customers, the competitor was 3,000. They buy 40 a year. So if they went with our guy, it's 160. If they went with the competitor, it was 120. However, the client benefit is that they have their predictive maintenance. They have some sort of gizmos on the thing that predict when the thing's going to fail. Reduces unplanned downtime, and it reduces the downtime by 35 to 40 percent. So now I've quantified it. Okay, this is the benefit. Reduced downplant time doesn't mean anything until you quantify it, right? Now it reduces it by 35 to 40 percent. That's still good. That's better. That's where most salespeople stop. But the rainmaker then calculates it. And there's 10 hours of unplanned dine time times 35 percent, the reduction, remember? That's 3.5 saved. 3.5 saved times $15,000, which is the cost of downtime in this industry, is $52,000 saved. So the true price of the product is 160 minus 52 or 107. Actual case history won the business. Everybody follow me on that? Dollarize or die. Trust me. You don't dollarize it, you're not going to get the sale. You could give it to, you, I, we have, we're working with a client now where we tell the client, anticipate that the product, the competitor is zero. Zero. And you can dollarize the difference too. So here it's 160 versus 120, you dollarize the 40, you're in. Okay, here's my rainmaker rule. Early to bed, early to rise, sell hard and dollarize. Any questions? <laughs> Anybody? I, 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 I saved it so I would have some, because I figure there's people here that have services. 
that are very difficult to dollarize. Anybody have services that are very difficult to dollarize? Okay. So what you have to do, what's your service? Uh, law. law. Okay. So do, do you um, charge a fee or a percentage of the thing? A fee. An hourly fee. Okay. And so when you're, you, whatever the, what would be, might be a certain circumstance of, uh, you know, like a case or something, whatever. You're, Drafting a contract. Okay, so in this particular case, drafting a contract, you've got to look at, is it going to increase the guy's gross margin dollars? Is it going to uh, reduce his current cost? Or, which it's probably going to do, help him avoid some sort of conflict and cost of conflict in the future, correct? Okay, so what would be the consequences in your experience or the customer's experience? If there were, why does, I'd, I'd go like this. Let's say you were the, I'm the lawyer, you're the customer, right? i said, why do you want a contract? Right, and so, yeah, okay. And, and well, how much money do you think is involved if the, cust the other customer doesn't pay, the other side doesn't pay? You're the customer, you tell me. You're the um, okay, so wouldn't you agree, therefore, that if you invested $500 in a contract or whatever it is, that, that, that's an insurance policy against a $10,000 risk? See, you got to dollarize it. And you got, you notice, but you notice the question I asked being the lawyer, I said, why do you want a contract? Well, I'm not going to be put anybody's words at mind, but I guarantee you every lawyer in the room has never asked that question. They assume about the contract. Have you ever asked it? Why do you want a contract? It's so basic, you've got to dare to be dumb. Why do you want light? Why do you want a lock? People come to me all the time. They say, geez, we want, we want sales training. I said, what is sales training in your opinion? Anybody else have a question? Anybody else have a remember a service? Yeah, Michelle. Well, right. Well, uh, well, I would say to someone. Someone comes to me and say, "Why do you want a logo? Why do you want a logo?" The answer: Well, to build my brand. Why? Because it reduces my marketing costs, or it increases my traffic, or I get new customers. If you if you figure out why, why your product exists, as the French say, it's raison d'être it's reason to be, you can then help the customer come to understand why they should do it in the first place and what the value to that is. You can dollarize every single product and service. And if your value is lower than your, the price or doesn't justify the price, you're, not, you're also not going to get the business. So I dollarize sometimes when you I mean, no one says a Rolls Royce is too expensive. What they say is I can't afford it. So there's some circumstances like that where you won't be able to get the business. But remember, one yes will trump 100 no's when you're selling services or businesses. But I think it's very, very, very important for you who are subject matter experts in your thing to be willing and able and train your salespeople to ask the most basic of questions, which is what we don't do. Anybody else?